So there's a brand new hundred dollar adapter out. So let's talk about it. So adapters have been kind of a way of life for many years. And then in the last two or three years, Sony has really completed their lens lineup. And I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to get into adapters right now, but Yugnuo just came out with a $100 adapter. And there's a couple of reasons to buy these. I mean, you might have some Canon gear that's left over. You might be on a shoot and be able to borrow some. And they're really good to have around for a lot of reasons. Or maybe Canon's lenses are cheaper, or there's some Sigma options and Tamron options that might be a little bit better. So I do wanna talk about uh, this adapter and then also compare it to two other adapters that I have. The Photo Deox adapter, which again is a Canon e -Mail Mount, or Canon EF mount to the Sony E mount. And then the MC11 Sigma adapter, which has been the one, my main go-to and pretty much everyone's main go-to. And usually this is about $250. Every so often you can find it on sale for 150. So let's talk about some of these adapters and the performance between the three of them. So the first test was the Yugnuo adapter and this thing is very lightweight. It's kind of a little plasticky. Um, it is metal mount, so that is good on both sides. It does have some buttons in here. It looks like a function button on there as well as a AF uh, manual or autofocus button on there. The only thing that I do not love about this hardware is going to be this tripod mount. Man, because this is so annoying depending on the type of lens you're using, especially if you're using it for video shooters. And that's, again, one of the main reasons to use these is that um, you can use a lot of Canon cinema lenses or prime lenses that they don't make for Sony E-mount. You can mount these to your, uh, for your Sony camera. So the big problem with those is that if you're mounting a tripod plate to the camera, they get in the way. And so it just doesn't work in most cases. So you have to mount the tripod plate to the adapter. But when you're switching between Canon lenses and non-Canon like Sony E-mount lenses, then it's a pain because you're always having to move the tripod plate between them. On the performance side of things, just keep in mind that every lens is going to be different. I tested with the Canon 7200 because this is a pretty much a recent high-end lens and then Sigma's 135 1.8 because I wanna see how they handle third-party lenses. So these are the two that I tested with Every lens is gonna be different, so the more I included, it just ended up being all over the place. So take that with a grain of salt, it will depend. But when it comes to these two lenses, here's how things performed. On the camera side, everything looked really good. I was getting eye autofocus, even extremely far away. This, even with the adapter and Canon lenses, is so much better than what you're getting with Nikon or Canon on the IAF side of things, even with the newest updates from those cameras. So overall performance on that was really good. The problem is if you start getting into servo and tracking as they're moving towards you, you start getting into trouble. It doesn't look like the camera is really auto-focusing in between frames. As long as you're holding that shutter down, it is locking that position. So I don't think you're gonna get that continuous autofocus that you're seeing on like Sony lenses that is amazing on being able to track continuously as a subject is moving towards you. That just isn't working really well. You can track your objects across the frame, snap your image, but you're gonna wanna stick to single image on that. But honestly, even when I had tested both the um, Sigma MC11 and this Photo Deox adapter, it pretty much gave me the same results. I mean, I wasn't getting very good continuous autofocus at multiple frames per second. I know there's a MC11 update that just came out for the Sony A9 that's allowing 10 frames per second shooting with that. I haven't tested that version yet, and I think it's only for the Sony A9. So, But even as I was tracking all across the frame, no matter what my daughter was doing, it seemed to lock on her, hold on her, no problems at all. Even in a portrait type scenario, it locked on the eye. Check my autofocus afterwards and zooming into 100%. Man, these things look good. There is no issues with adapters when it comes to that. It was working perfectly well and tracking amazingly well, just as good as the native lens. After doing a bunch of tests with the Canon lens, I switched over to the Sigma and this is where things got uh, horrible for the Yugnua right here. I got absolutely no performance with Sigma lenses on that. And it was going crazy. I was actually worrying I was damaging my lens so I turned it off, but I was not getting any autofocus performance on that. In fact, when I started switching things even into manual, it was giving me errors on, uh, on everything. So basically you will not want to use Sigma lenses and hopefully 
all Canon lenses are gonna work properly. Again, I can't test every Canon lens, but um, Sigma lenses for sure did not work. And I'm sure they have it in their literature that they don't operate with Sigma lenses, but a lot of people who want to own third-party lenses will probably want to look at putting a different type of lens, and a Sigma is a great choice on that. They also make some pretty good Cinema Prime options for you. So um, yeah, it does not work at all with that. I was getting performance with the Sigma lens on both the Photo Deox adapter and the Sigma MC11 adapter. So keep that in mind. Uh, right now, my worst situation was with the Yugnu adapter right here. And it's under $100, so that might be part of the situation right here. However, they do have a micro USB port and the ability to do firmware updates. So possibly this kind of stuff will improve with the updates. Uh, the MC11 also does have the ability to update. The Photo Deox does not. So this was the only one that whatever the performance was the day you bought it, that's pretty much the performance you'd get forever. And given the state of the industry and how many updates I've seen for the MC11, I'd say that's a little bit scary for me because there are a lot of updates that have dramatically improved performance for the MC11. Also keep in mind for those of you shooting video, autofocus during video is gonna be a non-starter. Basically on any of these lenses, as soon as you go into video, uh, you are just not gonna have continuous autofocus. So keep that in mind. Native lenses are gonna be the way to go. So basically when it comes to the Yugnuo adapter, it is not my favorite of the bunch. In fact, in most areas, it performed the worst, especially when you consider not working with third-party lenses like my Sigma lenses right there. That was a major thing for me, not having that ability. And the main reason I wouldn't get it, in addition to the tripod plate, because that kind of irks me because I shoot video a lot and I shoot with tripod plates a lot, like those long Manfrotto ones that get in the way. So um, for me, that made it almost a non-starter. However, you do have the ability to do firmware updates. So if you wanna get some something super cheap, you only have a couple Canon lenses and maybe it'll get better over time. The Yugnuo might be a good option. It seemed well built. And again, for my Canon lenses, performance was very good. I had no issues with the 7200 on here and it focused just fine for single point shooting, not single point shooting, but uh, slower frame rate. So it just one second shots, that worked just fine. Continuous tracking, 10 frames per second, five frames per second. That's where these are gonna fail to compare to a native lens. The Photo Deox have also been kind of hit and miss with because when it works, it works pretty well, but when it doesn't, it can be kind of all over the place. There's no ability to do updates on that. So I just don't use it and don't rely on it quite as much just because I'm worried about the future availability of this working with a lot of new lenses on here. So that kind of brings us back to the MC11. And honestly, guys, this is still the way to go if you can afford it because not only are you getting a little bit better build quality on that, you're getting your firmware updates and it does have the ability of working with Sigma lenses and it works really well with Canon lenses as well. So for me, I've had no problem across the frames. Again, adapters are still very limited. There are a couple people that shouldn't use them, but that's my impression so far, guys. So um, I'm still using native lenses almost entirely, but because I own Canon lenses, every so often I like to throw some Canon glass on there. I use my 7200 a lot. Hopefully this has been helpful. Please like and subscribe if you don't mind it. And again, check out some of this and my gear in the links below, as well as the review for the a7 III. If you haven't seen that yet, you should absolutely check that out. Thanks guys so much for watching. We've got a Facebook group as well. If you need some more information, join that folks Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the comments or in the description below. Thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you real soon.